All processes that attract a payment will have a system-generated invoice or invoices as well as the accepted payment channels to be used. As such, you should not make any additional payments to facilitate the processing of your application. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the tutorial on the registration of specific power of attorney on a disaster. When a person or entity grants power of attorney to another person or entity, it means the latter has authority to act on their behalf in specified legal matters. As it concerns this application, the said authority on the mentioned matters is granted by a land proprietor, that is, a donor, to a particular individual, that is, a donee, in relation to the property in question. This application can only be initiated by an advocate with an active practicing license and one who is registered on Adisasa. To begin with, you log into the platform, key in your Adisasa ID or national ID number, enter your password, and then click Continue. Upon doing so, you'll be provided with a one-time password code, an OTP, which will be sent to the phone number you used to register with on the platform. Once you have received the OTP, type the code onto the OTP prompt box and then click Login. You'll then be navigated to the dashboard, where you'll find a number of services listed under the departments we have in the State Department of Lands and Physical Planning. The account you're logged in as is your private account. For you to initiate this process, you will need to switch to your advocate account. So go ahead and click on the profile icon. It will display a drop down menu with the professional account which has been approved for you as an advocate. For more information on how to upgrade to a professional account, check out our YouTube tutorial explaining the same through the link featured in the video description. Navigate to the land registration section, click on view more, and navigate to the power of attorney option. Here, you'll find different variations of the application, which include general power of attorney, irrevocable power of attorney, revocation of power of attorney, and specific power of attorney. In this video, the focus is on the latter, so go ahead and click on it. You'll be directed to the applications page, and here, there are a number of tabs provided. There's pending, ongoing, completed, rejected, and canceled. All the applications that you have initiated will be listed among the tabs provided, depending on the level of processing of your application. The pending tab features applications that you have initiated as an advocate, but have not completed, it or they still need some action from your side or from the parties involved in the applications. The ongoing tab features applications which you have submitted as an advocate and have been forwarded to the Ministry for Processing. The completed tab features applications which have been approved by the relevant ministry officials. The rejected tab is for applications that have been rejected by the ministry officials for one reason or another. The reasons will be communicated to you on the application. And the cancel tab is for applications which have been cancelled by the different parties involved in the application process. For you to initiate this application, you will click on the new application button on the top right hand corner. Please note that if you have not switched roles, the new application button will be unavailable. You will then be navigated to a page with FAQs, which is the frequently asked questions particular to the registration of specific power of attorney. You can go ahead and explore the FAQs to get an understanding of this application. Take a look at who the actors are, what the requirements are, the payments and documents needed for this application. If satisfied, click on Next. The next section is the application details. Here, you'll first be required to fill in the parcel details. Go ahead and enter the parcel number in the format registry forward slash block and then the block number with no space in between forward slash the parcel number. Also, select the registry. In this case, it's Nairobi. The next part is the proprietor or donor details where you are required to enter the AdSasa ID of the mentioned. Once you've entered the AdSasa ID, click on search. A pop-up box will appear requiring you to select the category of person to execute as the donor. Only the donor can execute on their behalf, so we'll choose the default option, which is self, and then click on the Save button. Upon doing so, the identification details of the donor will be listed below. A key thing to note is that if you wish to change the donor you picked for one reason or another, you can click on the Remove button, and you can enter the correct AdSasa ID of the donor. The next part is the donor details, that is the recipient of the power of attorney. Proceed to enter the answer ID of the donor. 
who at this point must have been registered on the platform, and then click on search. A pop-up box will appear, requiring you to select the category of person to execute as the donee. Kindly follow the steps portrayed in the previous section, and the details of the donee will be listed on the right. We'll then be required to enter the specific powers that the donee is limited to executing in the name of the donor. In our case, the donee has power to act on behalf of the donor in executing transactions related to the parcel number in question. You'll then go to additional provisions, where you'll add additional information or provisions that the application is subject to, if any. We'll then proceed to the law firm details, where you'll provide the details of the law firm that you're acting under. Here, you'll have the option of tying the application to a registered law firm on Adisasa, where you'll be required to type in the Adisasa ID of the law firm, then click on search, and the law firm details will automatically be populated. However, in our case, we'll be manually keying in the law firm details. As far as the website and the street address of the law firm are concerned, they are not mandatory fields to fill. However, you can provide the information required if applicable. So after you have filled in the law firm details, you can go ahead and click on Next. And you'll be navigated to the Documents page, where you'll upload any additional document or documents which you feel will be relevant during the processing of your application. A key thing to note is that the documents should be uploaded in either PDF, PNG, or JPEG formats. So go ahead and type in the name of the document in the text box provided, and on doing so, the Choose File button will be activated. Click on it to upload the desired document from your local machine or device, and the document will be listed against the Choose File button. You can attach several documents in this section, one at a time. If you're satisfied with the document or documents you have submitted to assist the application process, you can proceed and click on Next. The last step is the confirmation step with all the details that you've provided. So scroll through the entire page and go through the details. If satisfied, you can go ahead and click on Submit. You also have the option of going back if you need to edit any information. For this case, we'll proceed and click on Submit. Upon doing so, you'll be prompted to approve on whether you indeed want to submit the request and then proceed and click Yes. You'll then get a confirmation message on a pop-up box which affirms that the application has been submitted successfully and then click on Close. At this point, the donor and the donee will get a notification on SMS as well as on email communicating that the application process has been initiated. Subsequently, the advocate will also be notified to execute on the application with a signature and also confirmed representation of some or all of the parties listed. A key thing to note is that you can view the progress level of your application on the progress bar as is featured on the upper section of your screen upon submission of your application. Additionally, upon clicking on the More button on the top right corner of your screen, you'll have the option of updating your application details if necessary. We'll thus move on to the execution section, where the advocate either accepts or rejects to represent the party or parties listed. If they do not represent some of the party or parties, they can click on reject, and the parties will get a notification that the advocate has declined to represent, and they will have an option of selecting or adding another advocate to represent them. In our case, you, the advocate, will choose to represent all of the parties listed. The last part is the Add Signature section, where you'll be required to append your signature. However, in this case, the advocate will hold out on appending the signature until all of the parties involved have verified and signed on the application. It is key to note that the advocate must be in communication with the party or parties involved throughout the verification process for ease of operations. Once the donor has logged in, they'll navigate the application in question and an OTP prompt box will be displayed with a Get OTP button alongside it. Below the OTP prompt box, there's a disclaimer for the party involved. It instructs them to only enter the OTP code if they authorize the application made on their behalf by the advocate involved in the process. 
So if the individual is aware of the process and approves of it, they'll click on the Get OTP button and an OTP code will be sent to their phone number. After receiving the OTP code, the individual will then key in the exact code received onto the OTP prompt box and then click on the Verify button. Upon doing so, a pop-up box will appear, affirming that the OTP has been successfully verified, so they'll go ahead and click on Close. Below the OTP verification section is the Execution section. Here, the party verifying this application has the option of changing the advocate representing them at their own discretion if they wish not to be represented by the said advocate. In case they proceed with this option, they'll click on the Change Advocate button, enter the Accessor ID of the new advocate to represent them, click on Search, the identification details of said advocate will be populated underneath, and then they'll click on the Change Advocate button below. That advocate will get a notification prompting them to accept or decline representation. In this case, the donor will not be changing the advocate and thus they'll navigate to the Add Signature section where they'll be required to append their signature. There are a number of options on how to do so. To begin with, there's the signing area here, as you can see, which allows them to sign with their computer mouse if they're using a desktop or a laptop and alternatively with a stylus pen or the index finger if they're using a phone or tablet to access the platform. They also have the other option of signing with another device. Upon clicking on this option, a pop-up box will appear, displaying the four alternative options for signing. For more information on the available signing options on Adisasa, kindly view our YouTube tutorial explaining the same through the link featured in the video description. In this case, the individual will sign on the signing area, they'll place the mouse cursor on the signing area, press and hold the left click button and then go ahead and append the signature. If satisfied, they can click on Save. However, if not pleased with it, there's the option of removing it by clicking on Clear and then appending the signature once again to their liking. There's a notification that will appear requiring the user to affirm that they want to submit this as their signature. They'll click on Yes. In doing so, the donor will have completed their role by consenting to the application. The remaining party that hasn't verified the application is the donee. The navigation process to verify the application is the same as that of the donor, as shown earlier. If the individual is aware of the process and approves of it, they'll go through the same process. As mentioned earlier, the advocate and the party or parties involved are in active communication during the verification process. As such, once the parties involved have done their bit, the advocate will be notified and they'll navigate to the application status page and refresh it. As you can recall, you, the advocate, held out on signing earlier on until the donor and the donee had verified and signed on the application. With that done, you can go ahead and append your signature. You can either sign on the signing pad area using your mouse and click on save. The second option is signing with another device using the four aforementioned options. So proceed and append your signature and click Save. There's a notification that will appear requiring you to confirm that you want to submit this as a signature. Click on Yes. In doing so, you'll have completed the application up to the point of accepting execution and the parties involved consenting to the application. In order to see out your role as an advocate in this process and submit the application request, you'll duly be required to pay the nominal stamp duty fee. However, it should be noted that the payment of this fee is not exclusive to the advocate. All of the involved parties will receive a similar invoice and any of them can pay for it. In this case, the advocate is paying the fee. As such, on the invoice, kindly click on pay. You'll be provided with the available methods for payment as well as the procedures to be used. In case after you've made your payment through the KRA portal, and it hasn't automatically reflected on the accessor payment invoice, you can opt for a self-settlement process. This involves clicking on the confirm button. A pop-up prompt box will be displayed, requiring you to enter the accessor invoice number, which is featured on the invoice. You'll also provide the payment registration number, as is featured on your carry payment slip, and then click on submit. Our system will check the latter information against the carry records and automatically confirm your payment. A key thing to note 
is that upon the completion of your payment, you'll have the option of viewing the invoice. So upon clicking on view, two options will be displayed. There's the invoice and the receipt. Once you click on the invoice, you'll be able to view the invoice details. And as you can see, it has been paid. You'll also have the opportunity to download said invoice to your local machine. At this point, the submit application button on the top right hand corner will be active. And once you click on it, you'll be prompted to approve on whether you indeed want to submit the request. Click on yes. You'll see a pop-up message confirming the submission and then click on close. The application will transition to the land registration department for further processing and approval. Once it has been approved, all parties will get a notification on SMS as well as on email communicating the same. And upon accessing the application on your account, you'll notice that the progress bar is at 100% meaning that the process is complete. As you can see, the application status reads approved and the new Power of Attorney entry number, as has been registered in the Power of Attorney register, is listed below. That's it for this tutorial on the registration of specific Power of Attorney on Adisasa. Feel free to give feedback on this tutorial in the comment section below. Also, subscribe to our YouTube channel and click on the bell button to get notifications on new videos as and when we post them. Can you follow us on our social media handles as well? That is at adisasa underscore ke on Twitter and Instagram and at adisasa on Facebook. Thanks for watching and goodbye.